There is a concept that I need to talk about first, uh, which is called convex combination. Um, it's uh, used in uh, all the uh, environment the uh, models. What it is is that if you have two points A and B, um, and if you select um, two weight lambda A and lambda B, one for point A and one for point B, and the assumption here is that the the sum of the lambda A and lambda B is equal to one, and then any uh, value that you get from lambda a times a plus lambda b times b is a convex combination of point a and point b and here you see uh, an example in there um, so you get if you have a point let's say you have an x y coordinates um, uh, a being 2 and 3 and b is um, 3 and 4 and you get a point um, 2.5 and uh, three point, which is a convex combination of A and B, when the weight is equal to 0.5 for A and B. So if we were to draw uh, uh, point A and B um, on a piece of paper, the convex combination uh, uh, is any point that in between uh, point A and point B. So let's look at this um, example that you have um, <coughs> B1 B2, B3, B4, B5. So you have five um, decision making units, uh, these five uh, black boxes in there. So if you were to plot these five in here, if you get a chart like that, uh, this is B1 and B2. So you get this um, point on the line in there, that's, which is called a T1, which is actually a convex combination between B1 and B2. And you have this B4 right there. And when eventually you're going to see how the the evaluates uh, each decision making units for B4. This B4 is actually being compared to a T1 in there. So you will have to need to figure out you know what is the coordinate values on this T1. But you can use the convex combination um, to figure out the values, which is right here on the uh, the next slide. So now let's look at what kind of information do we need in a DEA model, uh, which uh, I call it the uh, data. Um, first thing, of course, you need the DMUs. Usually, uh, is denoted as DMUJ, J from one to N. So if you have fifteen um, companies or fifteen DMUs, the N is going to be equal to fifteen, and then uh, you will need to have a set of inputs. Okay, uh, x i j um, i goes from one to m. M is the number of inputs. So if you have three inputs, and m uh, uh, is equal to three. And uh, uh, for the j's, uh, d m use i's input. Uh, this that's uh, what's it? x i j. So if you have x three five, that means the third input uh, for d m u number five. And you, of course, you, we also need an output. So the S here is the number of output there. So you see Y three six. That is the third output uh, for DMU six. Now, remember also the are represented in um, X and Y. That's the standard notion in DEA. Uh, these X and Y are observations. So these are the given. Data, uh, you know the values on all the x and y's. The information that you need to decide later on, you're going to see, is actually are the weights. Okay, the weights that decides the uh, convex combination. So this is the information on the data set that's provided in, in the book. It's the uh, Fortune uh, uh, 500 uh, company, global companies. We have five measures. Okay, you have three inputs: uh, the assets, equity, number of employees. So I goes from one to three, and we have two outputs. And uh, the data set has 15 uh, companies. Of course, if you go to uh, Fortune magazine, there are more than uh, 15. But we select the top 15 companies, and we can use that file throughout the book. Uh, the case here um, to demonstrate how you can build uh, the models in a spreadsheet. So what we need to do is we actually need to run a DEM model 15 times, one for each DMU, in this case one for each company. Um, in the DEM model what we try to do is try uh, to determine whether we can find a set of weights so that the convex combination of these 15 companies perform better than one of the 15 
uh, companies? If the answer is yes, then this company is inefficient. Okay. If the answer is no, then this company is uh, efficient. Now let me uh, go to the previous slides uh, so I would explain to you what does this mean. All right, this is the example that I um, showed you before. So in this case, um, if you you can find out that the convex combination of B1 and B2, okay, T1, this DMU, the performance of this DMU, this DMU does not exist, okay, it's just in the convex combination, is better than the performance of uh, this B4, okay. The reason is because um, if you look at um, the measures in there. Uh, this is the supply dollars. Okay, and th we're talking about. This is an example. If you read the book, you know this is an example from uh, from uh, taking from a banking industry. So you have the supply dollars, and you also have the number of the tera hours. So what you need to do is you actually want to reduce the the uh, the supply dollars or to reduce the tera hours. So the ones that that closer to to this area, they have uh, a better performance. Uh, that's why you know, this the before it's inefficient because you can find a convex combination that has a better performance than B4. Now for B1, you don't, you can't find any convex combination that has a better performance than B1. That's why B1 is efficient, and also B2 is efficient, and B3 is efficient, and B5 you can find a convex combination between B2 and B3, which is right here which has a better performance than B5. That is why B5 is inefficient. Alright, so this is sort of the compact uh, presentation of a DEM model. So you have this theta, which is the uh, the efficiency score. Um, and the left hand side of this model, this is a, by the way, it's a linear program problem. Uh, the lambdas are the weights that can be decided. And x i j and y i j are the observations of the inputs and the outputs and all the DMUs. And then again, the sum of the weights is equal to one. And of course, the theta is, as I said, it's an efficiency score, but it is also um, a decision variable. Um, if you do it in the um, spreadsheet, uh, this theta is both a decision variable and also. Uh, should be used as an objective function. You try to minimize that. Now, if you notice the heading in there, it says input oriented. Um, we will talk about more why this is input oriented uh, uh, later on. But right now, let me just say this model focuses on um, reducing the inputs because this is the EXI0 and YI0. This is one particular DMU that's being on the evaluation. Uh, the left hand side does not change from DMU to DMU, but this uh, right hand side will change from DMU to DMU. If you evaluate DMU number one, you're going to replace the inputs and the outputs for DMU one. So what this model does is try to see if this particular DMU can still reduce uh, the inputs. Okay. If the answer is yes, then that means that DMU is not efficient, and if the answer is no, that means the DMU is, is efficient. It's on the frontier. Okay, you you will know that by solving this model. In a sense, if uh, the optimal solution to the theta uh, is equal to one, that means the inputs cannot be reduced uh, in the same proportion. That means the DMU is on the frontier. Now this model may appear that you only have three constraints, but if you look carefully um, in here, this one is actually have m constraints, one for each input, and then you have s um, constraint, one for each output. 